Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. This video is brought to you by RV Deep Clean. Over 40 ways to clean and downsize your Revit model all in one place. Get a free copy today by using the link in this video description. Have you ever wanted to click one button and have all of your Revit backup files cleaned up for you? For example, in this folder here, I have several RFA and RVT files that are backups. Of course, I can remove them manually. But what if it's a bigger folder like this one here with lots of files to click and remove, especially when I have to do the same for any subfolders too? For instance, back to the test folder here, if I go to this RFA folder, we have here also some backup files here for Revit families. The same story here for this RVT folder. We have them here as well. This is where Dynamo is really good because once we have the script created, it can go into this root folder, all the subfolders, and then even the sub 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 folders and find and remove all the backup files for us in just a few seconds. That is, of course, the script I have here that I will show you how to build today. To use it, I can simply click on Browse here, select a folder I want it to clean up. In this case, it's the same folder here called Test. And then for the first pass, I might just want to review what kind of files it will remove for me. So let's do false here and run the script. Right away, I can see these are the files that Python has detected as backup files. You can tell by the names there that these are correctly backups. So if I'm happy with this, I can go back to here, change the value from false to true, and then press on run again to really delete these files from my folder. When I go back to test here, only the original non-backup files have been kept. The same happens in the subfolders too. Here I have only two family files and under RVT, only three original models. No more backups in this location. And the good thing is, this kind of script is super easy and quick to set up. So let me show you now exactly how that works. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now because we do tutorials like this every single week. Okay, let's begin. Firstly, of course, let's open Dynamo from here and then start a new definition. Now it's a usual thing I normally do in my tutorials. Let's make now a way for Dynamo to read a text file that contains a Python script. We can then use a text from that file as a script input for this node here. And then it will just run the Python script that we have in the text file. Okay, so now we know everything we need to do in Python should go into this test.py file, which I have opened already. So let me bring it up now. And now the next step, we will go into Visual Studio Code, my favorite Python script editor for Dynamo. If you are new to this kind of workflow, don't worry. Just go down to this video description and use a link there to see my basic video tutorial on how to script things in Dynamo this way. It will also show you how to set up and use Visual Studio Code because this is really the best editor you can have for writing Python script to use later in Dynamo. The video will also show you step by step how to create and understand and use this Python script template that I have opened already. So that should give you all the information you need to then come back to this video and follow me from here. Okay, let's start scripting in here. The first thing we need to define is of course the root folder. In this case, I want to find and remove backup files in this folder here under C, Revit, and then test. So now let's give Dynamo a way to know this is the folder we need. Back to Dynamo, I can right click there and search for directory path. We can now click on browse to select that same directory from before. So I can expand this PC here, go to the C drive, look for Revit, and then select the subfolder called test. Press OK now. And you can see that folder text is now in there as the text path. Let's bring it here now and then fit this into the first input port of the Python script. Secondly, I need a Boolean input node to specify if I really want to delete the backup files that Python will identify for me. This is because it could be dangerous to delete things immediately. Instead, it's safer to see the list of things to be removed, confirm that these are the files you no longer need, 
and then flip the switch down here to say yes python should go ahead and delete those files so now we can search for boolean here and connect this to the second input port let me now rename this to really delete the files so that's a question you need to answer yourself for now let's keep this as false we will change it to true really soon in this video so now with this kind of input node setup i am now ready to go into a text editor and put my logic into this test.py file let's go there now here in python we need to firstly bring in the two input values we have from the graph so let's say root equals to in zero root here will mean the root folder from which python should start searching for backup files and then we have delete files this will be a new yes no parameter value and i can get this from input number one now for the next step we need to import from the python script library two modules one is called os and one is called regex or re here for short as you can see, I have these two lines added already. But if you haven't, make sure to go up here and type in import OS and then import regular expression or re. With that done, we can now go back to here and start listing all the files in this root folder and its subdirectories. Let's create here a new list called path, starting out as an empty list. And then go on to the next line. We can then define our for loop. Now, this is where I want to show you the method from the OS module that we want to use for this script. Let's go to a web browser now and just search for Python OS walk. We have here several results coming back. Let's go for the official Python documentation one, this one here. I can do a search for os.walk. And here we have the full description of it, what this command is and what it does. It's a lot of text here, but the key information here is right in the first paragraph. It says that this command will generate the file names from a directory tree by walking the tree. This means it will consider both the root directory and all the subfolders within that root. If the subfolder also have subfolders too, then these sub subfolders will also be checked. So we can be sure all the files will be captured and checked for us by this command. For the return value, it has three, the directory path, the directory name, and the file name. So now let's start using them in our loop. If I go back to here now, we can say for the path, then the subdirectory, and then the file names. Next, I can call the command. Let's say os.walk and then pass in the root folder path like this. We now have several different file names under this files variable. So now let's start a nested for loop here. Let's say for file name in files. We want to now see individual file names here in Dynamo just to see what we are doing. So let's say watch.append here and then do file name with the right casing, of course. Actually, let's say path here instead of watch. So we can see it directly in the out output. I will now save the script here and check it output in Dynamo. Here we go. That's the first error for today. Let's see. So something's wrong on line 50. The name in is not defined. Let's go back there to check. Oh, yes, of course, because the whole word has to be in capital. That's just a mistake I made there. Let's save it and we run the script. And here we go. Now we have all the file names here from our four loops. As you can see now, it has 22 items. That means it has successfully found all these 11 items, plus the five rabbit files here in the RFA folder, and then also the six RVT files under the RVT folder. So we know now that all the root and subdirectories have been considered. That's really good. For the next step, I need to have a reliable way to distinguish between the names of backup files like this one from the names of the original family or Revit models that we want to keep. For instance, I want to keep family2.rfa, but I want to delete all three backup files here from it. 
and that would be only possible if I can tell them apart which one is original and which one is a backup. To do so, I need to make use of this second library here that I have imported from up there. It's the regular expression library. And the best way to understand regex or regular expression is going to this very helpful website here. It's called regex101.com. Hopefully the website will still be up and running by the time you see this video. Anyway, let's do this. If I go back to the folder here and maybe select these files, right click and choose to copy the name. That's a plugin, by the way, that allows me to copy the names from these files so quickly. If you don't have that plugin, simply copy manually some of the names here yourself and then go and paste them in here like this. They will serve here as a test data set for us to form our regular expression string. Let's do it up here. I can see here it's saying that I should insert my regular expression right there. So here's the first one. And as soon as I've done that, you can see now that all the backup file names on this list have now the relevant parts highlighted. These are the text parts from the file names that match the regular expression formula that I have defined up there. This formula has several subsections. If you want to know more about what each section means, just go to this explanation tab here and read what they have here to say. For now, let's just copy everything here. Back to Python and save the string that I copied in a variable called pattern1 and do it like this. As a good practice, I will also say R here at the beginning of the string just to tell Python that this is a raw string so it shouldn't do any processing of special characters inside this string. With that done, I can go back to the for loop, go down to here and maybe do the first conditional statement. Let's say if regular expression dot search and then say pattern one comma file name what i'm doing here is this i'm telling python to check if the file name here has any text that can be used to satisfy the condition that i set up using this pattern one variable so let's see the result now i can now cut this line and move it down to here that means the file name will only be added to the past list if it satisfies this condition. Let's see which one do. I will save the script again and then go back to here to test it. You can see immediately now we have a much shorter list. And on this list here, I only have the file names of the backup Revit models. So not RFA yet, only RVT files for now. But nevertheless, we can see now clearly that the pattern has worked. We don't have original file names here anymore. Only backup files have been identified. Coming back to here, I can do the same now for RFA files. So let's say we could copy this line, change this to pattern two down here. And for this one, the only difference will be the file extension. So let's say the RFA here. And down to here, I can do all regular expression dot search. Very similar to before, but now I'm using pattern 2 on the same file name instead of using pattern 1. So now this condition will be true for both backup Revit families and backup Revit models. Let's save it and test it here again. Look closely, we now have 8 files. If I run this, we now have 14 because now backup Revit families are also included. So everything works. Let's say we are happy now for these files to be removed by Python. We didn't need to construct the file path from these file names because now we have just the file names. That means there's no way for Python to know where these files are. So let's help it out. If I go here to the next line, we can say file path as a new variable, and this will be os.path.join. And the two sections to join is firstly the path to the folder of the file. And then secondly, the file name. With that done, I can now see the file path in the output list. Let's save it here, test it now. And yes, it's working because now I have the full path to the backup files, not just the file names anymore. That means the final step here will be to delete the files at these file path locations if I want to. Let's do here another condition. If delete files, then I can do os.remove file path. We can now save the script 
test it here again. Same results from before. And if I go back to the folder, all the backup files are still here. Nothing changed. And that's because I didn't flip the switch here from false to true. The idea is this, you can run the script once with this set to false to confirm that all the file paths in this watch node are the ones you want to remove. If that's the case, you can then go back to this input node and change the false value to true. If we now save the script and run this, nothing seems to be different this time. But when I go to the folder now, I only have the original Revit families and model files. All the backups have been removed for me super quickly. And the same happens in the subfolders too. If I go to RFA, I only have the original family files. The same goes for the RVT folder. There's no backup here anymore because Python has cleaned them up for me. Very nice. The last step now to finish the script is to make it independent of this test.py file. Super simple too. If I do now Control A to select, Control C to copy. Back to here, let's use a proper Python script node. Double click to open it. Change to Python 2 here for maximum compatibility. Not all of us are on the latest Revit versions yet, so this may help. And now I can do delete on all of these and then replace them with the text that I copied from my Visual Studio Code window. I can now save this, close it down, and transfer the input nodes to the new script node here for Python, including the output too as well. And that's all I need for the script. So there you have it. If you want to use this script directly right now without having to rebuild it, just go down to this video description and use the link there to download this script directly. If you, however, want to focus on mastering Python scripting in Dynamo, then check out my full Python course in the video description. If you like this lesson and want more like this every single week, make sure to subscribe to this channel now. For now, have a good day and I'll see you in the next tutorial.